So tucked away in the back here, I've got two oil furnace burners that are Beckett blowers. And I've been waiting forever to get to this project. And today's the day for this. It looks pretty simple to hook up. So let's spend some time together and get that working out there. So needless to say, I'm doing this outside for obvious reasons, because I don't know exactly how this is gonna run. Now, originally I thought this was just gonna be a matter of just hooking up this black and white wire and push and start and the thing would turn on. However, it turned out there was a little bit more to this than you might think. And I kind of opted to kind of delve into it and check everything out on the inside. Now, don't worry, it's actually a lot easier than you might expect. Let's crack open this rat's nest and take, <laughs> take a look what's on the inside of this. Now, this looks really complicated and super intimidating. And yeah, I was kind of intimidated when I looked inside it as well. But let's go through it step by step and explain it all to you. First, we're going to remove this control box, that gray thing that's on the top there. It's not really needed for our project, and we're going to put two switches on here. So we're going to put this where it belongs, in the garbage, and really simplify this. And then we're going to pull all of this crap out of here. What I'm pulling out here is a sensor. I think it's like kind of a photo sensor to tell whether it's burning or not. You know what? I'm throwing safety out the window here, and I don't really want this as part of it. If you want to keep stuff like this in there, I'm pretty sure you can get it to work with the gray box. Kind of my knee jerk reaction and thinking back on it, it probably was simple as putting a little 12 volt switch on it just across to jump or something and it would work. But I'm not really interested in doing that. I want to keep it simple and explain it so people can understand how I'm doing this. We're going to rip out all these wires and kind of simplify it down to two sets of wires. We're going to have the igniter and then we're going to have the motor. And all of these wires here we're not gonna need those. Those can all get recycled. So this little black box here, this is the igniter, okay? There's two wires coming out of it. Doesn't matter which direction, whether one's black or one's white, you just need power going into it. And then it's gonna throw some stuff through a coil and then it's gonna burn out here, lighting the fire. Let's close all this back up because I'm pretty sure we're not gonna have to go back in here again unless we have a problem down the road. It's all held together by a couple little screw toggles that just kind of hold it on. Super easy access for when you have to get into it again. So let's roll it over here and have a look at the pump. This copper line here, this is a bypass. So anything that's not used by the pump is actually going to get spit out and sent back to the tank. Keep a close eye on this a little bit later on in the video and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, of course, we talked about stuff going out of the pump. Now, you're probably wondering where does the oil or the diesel go into the pump, they, and that's pretty easy, okay? On the side of this pump here, everything's clearly marked. I'm going to take this fitting off the inlet. Yes, this is the inlet of where the diesel or the fuel oil is going to come into this. And this inlet's not what I'm going to be using for the actual setup. I'm actually going to throw on regular fuel line. Okay, well, it's not going to be fuel line. It's actually, it's actually going to be clear tubing that I'm just going to use in a temporary basis. Now, I'm going to take the silver box off over here because we're actually going to replace this with another box to put two light switches in it. I ran down to Home Hardware just down the road and I probably could have found something a little bit better, but the store beside me, super nice people, but they only have a limited supply of really basic stuff. So we're going to have to do a few little mods to all this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create my own punch out. Okay, so obviously this is a plastic box and there's going to be a lot of heat going into this uh, coal furnace. So it's probably something I'm going to have to keep a really close eye on and make sure this doesn't melt off the side of it. Failing that later on down the road, I'll probably get a steel box, put some shielding on it. It's probably as easy just putting a little piece of tin in front of it and then it'll be good to go. Let's take this back out there and we'll do a little bit more trimming to make it fit up proper. So here comes the full disclaimer on all this, okay? This thing can cause a fire really fast, okay? It's spraying liquefied diesel into the air. So if you're planning on doing something like this, you're going to want to do your research, okay? Have a fire extinguisher handy. You see gas cans everywhere while I'm working. Probably not the smartest move I could have made. But you know what? I'm going to take my level of safety. You accept your level of safety, and we'll, <laughs> we'll all kind of figure it out as we go, right? So if you're drilling into the body like I am, you're gonna to wanna to be really careful because I'm not exactly sure what's on the other side of this. So the screws are only going in just maybe an eighth of an inch to hold it all on. Now, let's take a look here. We got our motor, we got our coil. We're just missing one important thing. That's right, that's the power that's gonna come in from the wall. 
This is a green extension cord that I had laying around. Well, and it's getting repurposed. Okay. Since this is a three prong extension cord, we're gonna, we're gonna shoot for safety here. And we're actually gonna put our kind of earth ground on here <laughs> and make sure no one gets electrocuted in a, in a rainstorm. So now that I'm getting this all kind of worked out here, it's just a matter of grabbing all these white wires. Okay, one of them from the coil is black because it's got two blacks, but I don't think it matters which direction it goes. So I'm grabbing one black from the coil. I'm gonna grab my white from the motor. And then what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna hook the extension cord white to it, which is coming from the wall. And I'm gonna screw all that together with a moret. Now I'm gonna jump over to these light switches here, okay? I don't know if this is code. I'm pretty sure my buddy down the road, Steve, he's going to have a look at this electrical work and he's going to be scratching his head wondering what the hell I'm doing. But moving forward, I'm going to jumper these two together and then I'm going to hook a hot wire to this. Okay, and now it's going to get hot to both of the bottoms of the switches so that when I flick the switch on, it's actually going to return back to where it's supposed to go. Now, keep in mind, this is one of my creations that's going to be heavily supervised. <laughs> okay, so... Whenever I'm running this thing, I'm not popping into the house and grabbing a coffee. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to go play Xbox downstairs because <laughs> I'm going to come back to a hell of a surprise if that's the case. So this is kind of a dangerous contraption. So if you're going to attempt this as well, like I said earlier, you're going to want to use a lot of caution and a lot of research on this. Okay. So now that I got this wired in together, I've got hot going to the both of the bottoms of the switches. Now, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to grab what's going to come out and that's going to be one of these two here. So let's grab this wire here and let's hook it up to the bottom of the switch. So this wire here is super important for the whole process because this is actually what's going to run the fan and the compressor at the same time. So the fan's going to come on, it's going to shoot oil into the setup, and then we're going to hook the next wire up, which is actually going to be the coil, which should ignite it. I think something that would work a little bit better would be taking this out and actually putting a momentary switch on something with a spring on it. So when I hook the coil up here, it'd be nice actually, rather than the coil running all the time is I just push the button and when I let go of it, the coil turns off. Probably a little bit better for the longevity of the coil because sure as shit, I'm probably going to forget to turn this off at some point and it's going to run for a half hour till I notice it. <laughs> Perhaps I'm going to wait till I melt this box off and then I'll have to rewire the whole darn thing and then I'll put the momentary switch on. So let's review this one more time. Okay, I've got the wires, all the white wires put together here. I've got the hot wire coming up in here and it's jumpered over to both of them and then it's coming out on the other side. It's headed out to the coil over here and then the other one's coming out and it's going over to the motor and the compressor. Now it's just a matter of slapping all this together and seeing if we got spark and seeing if the fan turns on. Because to be honest, originally, you know what? I don't even know if this thing worked. <laughs> and it's gonna be a heck of a surprise either whatever happens. And of course, I actually did a little bit of safety here. I made sure shit was unplugged when I was working on it for a change. Look at me, eh? All right, let's explain the setup really quickly here. Turn the spark on, it sparks. The cool thing is turn the spark on in the fan and it actually shoots the spark outside there. Now we're only missing one ingredient to the fire triangle. We need to add some fuel to the whole process. And remember what I said here, this is the inlet. We're going to put an inlet spigot on it. And I'm just going to go with some clear fuel line. Okay, it's not fuel line, it's actually like water line. <laughs> um, probably won't last very long. I'm just using it until I get some actual stuff that's going to work proper for me. And it's also because it's clear, it's going to help me troubleshoot some of the air bubbles that I'm going to have in it later. So let's slide this on here, make sure it's on super tight, and let's move on to the next step of the process. Okay, so something else I have to make really clear here, okay? I'm running this on diesel, okay? I'm not running this on used motor oil. Used motor oil is probably going to plug this up. Plus, it's too viscous to run through this. There's lots of little tiny orifices in here, and if I run use motor oil, once again, I'm not using motor oil, I'm gonna have problems. Now, speaking of problems, can anybody spot a safety violation? Yep, that's right. 
I'm trying to have a fire here. That's not water running off of there. That's diesel spewing out of the bottom of the bypass valve. <laughs> now, let's go grab a fire extinguisher before we actually burn this place down. And let's try to do this right again, okay? Now I've got a part in here. I'm actually gonna hook the bypass hose up and I'm gonna put it right back into the diesel container. Now, I'm gonna fire this up again and would you look at that? It's actually diesel and bubbles flowing back through there, okay? So, what I did before on this is I actually plugged that, okay, off camera. I'd actually put a plug in there thinking it was gonna work. I go to turn the motor on and would you believe it? The motor wouldn't turn over because the compressor was pushing too much pressure through the bypass. So, super important to have that bypass hose on there, going back in there. And you know what? It can't hurt anything, I guess. And let's take this for a test run on the actual machine. Now, hey, listen, no judgment, okay? You've done this too, okay? We're gonna do some hokey pokey setup here. I'm just gonna slap this on here and see if it's actually gonna throw enough flame to heat this up before I make a proper fitting for it. Now, like my mom always said, make sure you check the oven before you turn it on. Because <laughs> I had some shit left in there from last year. And and I don't think I needed that big black plume for the paper that was going to get thrown off from that and everything not running right. Hey, you know what? Since you made it this far as well, check out this casting video I got. I know you're going to like this one. And I've also got some other machining videos as well. And stay safe out there, guys. And whatever you do, make sure you're out in the shop having fun, building something, and doing something really cool. We'll catch you on the next one.